Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. How are you today? I'm glad to be with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome you once again to the 11th edition of our pastor's talk. Praise God. It is truly a blessing to be able to sit in the presence of the Lord God and to allow him to minister to us. I hope you're learning things over these past few months. I know I have. I know I have grown a great deal in uh, my relationship with the Lord. And I pray during this time of uh, the pandemic that our eyes would not, and I encourage you not to keep your eyes on the pandemic and not to keep your eyes on the things that are occurring in this world, uh, but to keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ to keep your eyes on Father God Almighty. He has sustained us and he will continue to do so. We need to rejoice. We need to rejoice that during this very difficult time, God has continued to keep us in his perfect peace. Amen? Amen. So I want to today, I want to go through uh, Romans 1 again. I want to continue on Romans 1 because I believe that there is so much meat for us to chew on uh, as we continue to worship our Lord God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's pray. Father God, who art in heaven, we thank you for this day, not only this day, but for every day you have given unto us and for the days that you have ahead of us. Lord, we know that in the name of Jesus, through faith, we have been saved and been given the gift of eternal life. So, Father God, help us to start living, even now, living for eternity. Help us today, Lord God, to open our ears, give us a mind to understand, so that, Father God, we can put into practice the things you are teaching in your word. We ask this all in the mighty name of Jesus, as we sit at your feet once again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Uh, I want to open to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Acts and then Romans. Amen. Romans chapter 1. Uh, I think the greatest thing that we can remember here is verse 16 of Romans 1. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. And why? Why is Paul not ashamed of the gospel? Why is Paul ready to go and proclaim the gospel to so many people, to, to the Gentiles? Why is he willing to break the mold and take the gospel throughout the world? He says it here in verse 16. He says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel because, here goes the reason, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Hallelujah. For everyone who believes, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. God is spreading his word. God is spreading his power. The power of salvation God has given to all of us in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And that's 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 the good news and I think that uh, as we study Romans, uh, we're going to find out that God that Paul rather by the power of the Holy Spirit, is going to continue to talk about God's righteousness, his righteousness, and, and that we are saved by the power of God and not of our own. Amen. Don't forget, he, he is uh, in a time where uh, there were many, many Jews who, who believed that salvation came by obedience of the law. And although there is truth to that, uh, if you you have to uh, maintain every aspect of the law, you cannot break one letter of the law if you expect to be made righteous in the law. Amen. And those who don't do that, we learn in the Bible and Paul will be telling us those that don't do that will not obtain the gift of salvation, will not make it into the heavenly realms to be with Father God throughout eternity. And so there is power in that verse. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God. It is God's power for salvation. 
How many of you know we need God's power? We need God's power for salvation. We need God's power for everything. So, we want to remember, we want to remember that salvation comes from God. That is by God's righteousness that we are saved. It's by his power that we are saved. It's by his gift of salvation that uh, in giving us the Lord Jesus Christ and raising him from the dead. Amen. You know that that resurrection is so powerful. So powerful because uh, without the resurrection, sin wins. The enemy of God wins and he is able to hold uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ down under under the earth but praise God hallelujah for the gift of salvation we want to praise God that God raised him from the dead and as God raised him from the dead he obtained victory victory over sin and death amen and and we can be sure that as God raised, raised Jesus from the dead God can raise us out of all situations all situations and this is the good news this the good news that God has given us this is the good news that we are going to need as we continue to read uh, in Romans chapter 1 starting at verse 18 let me just grab this hallelujah give me one second here I could have set this up better but praise God Starting at verse 18 in Romans chapter 1. Now I preached on this on Sunday. So we are going to continue in uh, chewing on that word. It says the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against what? Against who? Against all godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Amen. This is why verse 16 is so important. It's so important because we need the power of God. Without the power of God, then we are going to be subject to the wickedness and the godlessness of sin. Remember, we're born into sin. That's what everybody needs to remember. So many of us are, uh, uh, at times and so many people today talk about how their good behavior you know i love people i care for people i help others and that should get me into heaven but the bible tells us that all have fallen short of god's glory that we all all fall short and do not do enough we are not good enough we are not perfect and so therefore we need god's intervention and God's intervention comes through the gift of salvation. Are you getting the understanding? Because this is what we need to be preaching as we go out into the streets. This is the good news that we need not be ashamed of. And this is the good news that we need to preach out in the street. But in order for this to take hold, in order for this word of salvation to take hold, uh, we need to understand that in the wholeness of God, the whole, the holistic nature of God, that there is sin and sin must be dealt with. And that God has to deal with the sin of the world and that the sin of the world will cause us to reject God. People need to understand that our sin nature causes us to reject God the supernatural God, the power of God, the righteousness of God, the peace of God, the joy of God. We all want these things, but because of our sin nature, we tend to reject the things of God. And that's what verse 18 begins to tell us. Because in verse 19 says, since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood 
from what has been made so that men are without excuse. The Bible's telling us here there are no excuses for not knowing the power of God. We see it every day as we sit out here, as I sit out here rather, in this yard. I see the very power of God. This week, a, a storm just blew by. And that storm showed us the power of God. How it uprooted big trees. How it caused damage. But we also saw the sun come back out. Even that very afternoon. To allow us to clean up. Uh, the mess that was caused by the wind and to restore our, our yards and our homes and our streets back to order. That's the power of God. Amen. And, and so often people reject that power. And when they reject that power, the Bible tells us the wrath of God is revealed. Revealed. God, uh, in other words, takes his hand off. And then we begin to see the ugliness of sin. And that's what's happening today. We are seeing the ugliness of sin. We, we have that in full view. Because God has removed the restraints. He has removed the restraints that allow the godlessness and wickedness of man to appear like they are winning. Sin will always uh, mask itself as the victor but we that's why God tells us to not keep our eyes on the things of this world if we keep our eyes on the things of this world the uh, lustful behavior of this world as the Bible says uh, the sinful nature of man as the Bible says the depravity of our minds if we keep our focus on those things we will without a doubt start believing that sin is winning we will begin to believe that sin has victory but that is furthest from the truth the gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ tells us and shows us the power of God to to uh, overcome sin and defeat sin amen that's something we should be jumping around about that is something that we need to shout from the mountaintops the power of god that comes through the gospel of jesus christ is power to save us from the power of sin the power of sin the acts of sin cannot will not cannot won't destroy the love and the power of god for those who believe. Now we can't forget that point. For those who believe. You see Satan wants to take our attention off God. And when he takes our attention off God. Then what's going to happen. Is he's going to. Uh, we are going to start looking at the things of this world. And let's look at some of the be behaviors. That happen. Verse 21. For though they knew God. They neither glorified him as God. Nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although, although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for, the images, for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over. You see what happens? You see what happens? When we take our eyes off of God and we begin to fall prey to the lies, the lies of, of the enemy of God and the power of sin, then we got our clear thinking stops and we become as fools, even though we claim to be wise. How many, how many people do we know claim to be wise? And, 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 and how many people have you ministered to who, who begin rolling off all these world, uh, worldly points? And they claim to be wise and, and they might appear to be wise, but we know that they don't know the gift and where the power really lies in our creator, Father God, who gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, I see it like this, that if, 
if there was if the people of this world were so wise then they would be able to save us from so many of the things we see but they can't they can't we have to rely on father god to save us especially from the power of sin and so we see that god gave them over he gave them over to their sinful De nature, their sinful desires, desires of the flesh, lust, depravity. He gave them over, and as a result, we see uh, sexual behavior. We see women lusting after women, men lusting after men, leaving the natural desire of God for the unnatural desire. We see, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to the, a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. Have you ever wondered why so many things that w people know should not be done, they do? Because of, the, because of sin nature and God releasing his restraints. You know, if you want to reject God, then you're going to live like sinful man we need the power of God the power of God to stop to give us the strength to stand against the way of sin and we see that they, they became with they became filled with every kind of wickedness evil greed and depravity they were and they were full of envy murder strife deceit and malice they are gossip slanderous, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invented ways of doing evil. They disobeyed their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Wow. Praise God. That long list. How often we see that in our communities. How often we see that even trying to creep into our homes to prevent us to prevent us from glorifying God. But today, saints, I want to say to you that our praise, all praise is to God. And I want to say to you that our praise and our focus, the focus of our attention should remain on Jesus Christ and Christ alone. That And, and the reason why is because God shows us the victory that he has given us in the name of Jesus. We need to keep our mind and keep our eyes on the prize, the victorious prize that God has obtained for us through Jesus Christ. And as you keep your eyes, you will grow from faith to faith to faith. Hallelujah. And as your faith increases and as your relationship with God increases, you will, you will have the courage and you will not be ashamed to go out and proclaim the good news gospel of Jesus Christ that God raised Jesus from the dead and because he lives we are saved from the power of sin so it says it, verse 1 concludes with although they know God although they know God's righteous decrees that those who do such things deserve death they not only continue to do these things but also approve of those who practice them. It, you see, as sin, uh, as we continue to engage in sin, sin continues to grow in us. And not only are we affected, but we begin to encourage those around us to continue their wrongful ways. But hallelujah, hallelujah, God has given us victory. Hallelujah for verse 16. So I don't want to end on that type of note. I want to end on the true note that uh, I am not ashamed of the gospel because the gospel is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Everyone who believes and follows. I want you to follow Jesus. I want to encourage you today to follow Jesus Christ. I want us to encourage one another. I want us to make sure that as we go out into the streets, as we go amongst uh, uh, 
all the people we come in contact with, that we let them know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God for salvation to overcome the things of, that we see in the world today. These things can be defeated. Just as sin is defeated, so can uh, many of the behaviors and the actions that we see in the world today. The sicknesses, the illnesses can all be defeated in Jesus' name. Will you join? Will you join with the other believers of New Life in the Bronx? Will you join with the other believers throughout the city, state, and nation, and world to proclaim that gospel? To proclaim that gospel to all who find themselves stuck in the sin of this world. That there's freedom in Jesus' name. As we continue uh, reading through Romans we are going to see this message time and time again. It's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God, says the Lord, that victory and righteousness comes through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Keep your eyes on Jesus, saints. Allow God. Look at what God has done. We always say that. Look what the Lord has done. Well, there, the Lord has done so much for us. He has pulled us through so much. And I know the day is coming when we are going to once again reconvene and meet. But until then, I want you to continue to remember. Continue to remember what God has done for you, to you, and with you. In Jesus' name, amen.